Cycling is a great sport. You can do it on the road, in your house, never mind, on a mountain, upside down. The options are endless. Bikes also come with different shapes, sizes, and socioeconomic connotations. Apple introduces the Apple bike. But the other day, I was getting crushed underneath the weight of my bike and my traumatic life decisions from the past and thought, what if bike wheels could be made of different materials? What if, instead of using heavy metals and rubber, we could use something as lightweight as paper to make the wheels? To realize my vision, I went out and bought two stacks of A3 paper. The first thing I noticed was that this definitely will not make the bike lighter. But at this point, I had lost the receipt for the paper, so I could not get a refund for the $30 I spent on it. Seems like I'll have to follow through with the idea. So let me introduce you to my bike. There's a company from China called Mobike that makes share bikes, which are public bikes you can unlock and use by scanning it on a phone app and paying a small fee. When Mobike came to Australia, I got very excited and immediately stole, I mean tried out one of their bikes. And it was so convenient that I brought it home to be able to consistently use their service. I even broke the automatic lock to make it more convenient. However, as great as the bike was, I put my A3 paper next to it and immediately realized that the paper was too small, or rather, the bike was too big. I needed to get a kid's bike instead. Now, does this mean it'll only be used by three-year-olds? Perhaps, but I have quite a few spare three-year-olds locked up in my basement, so that should be no problem. A few days later, I was able to bring home this beautiful, monster-high 16-inch ghoulicious kid's bicycle children's bike that I bought second-handed. It has the luxury and comfort. It's in brand new condition, and it has the style and flair that really puts the ghoul in ghoulicious. In all honesty, it made me kinda sad to take off the original ghoulicious wheels, as they were so fashionable. But it was necessary to allow for its new, better wheels, which I will eventually start making. The brakes were getting in the way, so I got rid of those too. Probably won't need them anyway. Unfortunately, however, this means that my bike will now violate Australia's road rules, which require bicycles to have at least one functioning brake. This was quite the shame, as I was really looking forward to showing off my paper wheels as I ride this bike on the road to go visit some of Australia's great natural destinations, such as the Niagara Falls. Wait, the Niagara Falls are not in Australia? Where are the Niagara Falls? Oh, they're in Canada. Oh damn, I don't think there's a way I can ride a bike there. Okay, why did I decide to make this video again? Anyways, after disassembly, it was clear that as long as I fit the front wheel onto this rod, and the back wheel onto this monstrosity of a thing, it should be fairly straightforward to attach them back onto the bike. So I suppose it's about time I explained how the wheels will be made. You see, layers of paper are only weak when they can slide against each other, or if they buckle under pressure. If you remove the ability for the paper to slide or buckle, in theory, it should be pretty strong. So that's why I got all these nuts and bolts and washers. If I cut all the layers of paper into a round shape and then bolt it together around its edges, the wheel should have much more structural integrity. So I drew a circle shape on the stack of A3 paper and started drilling holes. One thing they don't teach you about working with a stack of paper is that the more you do to it, such as putting a bunch of bolts around the edges, the more contorted it becomes. So it's no longer stacked perfectly and starts becoming thicker. I realized this when I wasn't able to connect the nut onto the bolt on one of the holes, even though the other holes could be bolted together just fine. I wish this phenomenon of becoming thicker and thicker would apply to my other stack of paper, but alas, I'm still broke and I've got a YouTube video to make. So the next day I went and bought some longer bolts. These were a lot easier to attach. Then I had to drill a hole in the middle of the wheel to attach it onto the axle. I didn't want the paper to go directly onto the axle as that would probably make the middle of the wheel too weak. 
So I found these pieces of threaded piping and nuts and washers, which when put together, can provide a lot more structural integrity to the middle of the wheel. But the piping had a diameter of 20 millimeters, but my biggest drill bit was only 10 millimeters. So to make the hole big enough was another janky spiritual journey. After I installed the piping, the next step was to cut out the round shape of the wheel. I tried using a saw, but after 40 minutes had passed and I've only done 5% of the cutting, I knew I needed a better way. Even the fresh paper scraps were turning old as I continued cutting. <laughs> oh, what the? So instead, I used a retractable knife to cut off the paper layer by layer horizontally, which sounds tedious but was surprisingly much faster. But this did give me flashbacks to when I was making terrible spaghetti bolognese and had to cut an onion layer by layer. The more layers I cut, the more I wanted to cry because of how stupid this project was. Finally, after many hours, I had finished the first wheel. It was nighttime by now, so after cleaning up all the paper scraps, I went to sleep very tired and dreamed about wheels. But it was all worth it. A few more grueling days later, I finally had two beautiful paper wheels, or should I say, two wheelicious, to finally match the flair of the ghoulicious children's bike. There was another slight issue. The axles were not able to fit the wheels onto the bike due to these pieces stuck on them, which I couldn't remove, no matter how hard I tried. Maybe it got too rusty over the years. So I got some new bolts, some new nuts, And then the front wheel went on pretty easily. Now with the back wheel, I had to attach this sprocket where the chain would go. Sticking it into this hole put it exactly in the right position, but I needed to attach it firmly so it wouldn't come out or slip when it turned. I glued some broken toothpicks inside the hole using epoxy, put a whole lot more epoxy on it, and then twisted the sprocket into place. Hopefully, the soft wood of the toothpicks will get mashed between the metal threads on both sides and mixed with the epoxy to make a really strong bond. Unfortunately, while I was gluing the toothpicks, I had accidentally glued some of them to my hand. The sacrifices I make for these YouTube videos. Then I put the chain on it and screwed it on. And there we have a bike with paper wheels. It was now the moment of truth. Time to test the bike. So before I test out the bike, I need to get the thumbnail just in case it breaks within two seconds and uh, you'll see my tears as I cry, but... Moment of truth, each of the wheels has to hold half of my weight. Step one is to see if it breaks or not and step two is to see if it actually moves. If I achieve one of those things, I call it a success. Didn't break, so that's a thumbs up. So the issue is, as the chain's rotating, this part is slipping, so it's not really bringing the wheel with it. The washer is going with it, as you can see, so I would have to attach the washer to the paper some way. Maybe through some bigger washer plate with holes all around so I can put bolts through it. And then I'd probably have to weld this nut to the washer and then the sprocket to the nut. I don't have a CNC router, a laser cutter, a welder, any of those things. So I can't ride this bike on flat ground. Let's see if it can at least go on some sort of slope.
Well, I'm gonna call that like a 30% success. The wheels themselves didn't show any signs of braking at all, which is quite surprising. I thought that would be the hardest part. So it might have actually worked if I had better tools. One thing you love to see is the bike still has the ghoul in the ghoulicious. And the bike indeed still had the ghoul in the ghoulicious.